Good afternoon. I'm John Corvino, Dean of the Urban D. Reed Honors College and Professor of Philosophy, and welcome to the 2022 Rainbow Graduation Awards and Homecoming. We will begin with our land acknowledgement from Stephanie Hawks. Wayne State University rests on Waiwatanag, also referred to as Detroit, the ancestral and contemporary homeland of the Three Fires Confederacy. These sovereign lands were granted by the Ojibwe, Adawa, Potawatomi, and Wyandot nations in 1807 through the Treaty of Detroit. Wayne State University affirms indigenous sovereignty and honors all tribes with a connection to Detroit. With our native neighbors, Wayne State can advance educational equity and promote a better future for the earth and all people. Thank you, Dr. Hawks. It is difficult to have any kind of commencement ceremony without acknowledging what a challenging couple of years it has been. And for those of us in the LGBTQ plus community, there have often been additional challenges because the usual ways that we form community have sometimes been cut off from us. But we are a resilient community and we come together today to celebrate that resilience and to celebrate your accomplishments. So let me be the first of many people today to say to you, congratulations. I want to welcome all of our guests, including our guests who are tuning in remotely. I would also like to acknowledge a few special guests, including Dr. Mark Kornblue, Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs. And Dean Steffi Hartwell, Dean of the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Because this year is a hybrid event, um, we're going to ask people from refraining from using the center aisle uh, so as not to block the camera. So when people come up to the stage, please, if you can, try to use the side aisles. It is now my pleasure to bring to the stage the chair of the Wayne State Board of Governors, Mark Gaffney, who will bring remarks from the board. Thank you, John. So I am the second person to say congratulations on your accomplishments. The board, the board of Governors of Wayne State University are very proud of you. We recognize how difficult this probably has been for you the last couple of years, uh, the adjustments that you've had to make. I hope that you are sufficiently pleased and proud of yourselves. I hope your families and your friends are likewise pleased and proud of you, as they very well should be. Going to college is not easy. I think sometimes, you've probably thought sometimes, some folks make it intentionally hard on purpose. Too many papers, too much studying, too much work. But you have persevered, and at any time in, in, in any student's life, this would have been a great accomplishment. Dealing with the pandemic made it all the worse. Representing the LGBTQ communities and all that you sometimes regrettably have to face from the rest of society makes it all the more troublesome. But it makes this day, I hope, all the more special for you. And on the behalf of the board, we recognize the challenges that you've had, and we are so very proud of you, and we are so very pleased with your accomplishments. Congratulations.
Thank you, Governor Gaffney. We will now have remarks from President M. Roy Wilson, which will be delivered from the screen. Rainbow Graduation Awards and Homecoming Ceremony. After the last few years, I'm so glad we're able to return to in-person celebrations, even if I can't join you myself. I want to offer my warmest congratulations to the newest class of Wayne State University alumni. While I know this has been a long road for you, here you are. You've made it to the finish line despite the extraordinary challenges along the way. So take time to celebrate all the sacrifice, resilience, and hard work it took for you to reach this moment with your degree in hand. I could not be more proud of all you've accomplished. A college journey isn't typically undertaken alone. And so I'd like to give special thanks to those who helped you along the way, to the parents, spouses, partners, children, grandparents, and others. May this day be filled with joy for you also. Our graduates stand on the shoulders of giants, and today's celebration is for all of those who helped you achieve your goal. Today's graduates are going on to pursue many different paths. Some of you are going on to graduate school, and I am confident that your time at Wayne State has prepared you well for the academic rigors of a graduate program. Others will go straight into the job market. And I believe you'll find that as graduates of an urban research university, you're uniquely prepared to thrive in a diverse and globalized workforce. Some of you may not quite know what the next chapter holds in store for you, and that's okay too. Sometimes uncertainty can lead us to some of life's greatest adventures. But wherever your next steps may lead you, I ask that you please don't forget about all the transformative experiences you had here and the relationships you forged over the years with faculty, mentors, and your fellow students here on this campus. As Wayne State alumni, you are our best ambassadors. Please share your stories with people you meet in the community and help kindle the light of learning for others. I wish you all much success. You embody what we mean by Warrior Strong. Congratulations again to the class of 2022. I would now like to introduce Dr. Marquita Chambly, Associate Provost of Diversity and Inclusion and Chief Diversity Officer. Thank you so much, Dean Corvino, and, and welcome again. Let me add my welcome to all the ones that you've received and offer my congratulations to you. Um, I want to acknowledge the families, both of blood and chosen, who are with us here today and recognizing that they're here to celebrate your accomplishments, as are we all, and, and actually played a pivotal role for some of you in being where you are today. So we really appreciate the folks who President Wilson mentioned, all of the people who've been here for you in the times when you've had to work really, really hard just to, just to persevere to do what you needed to do. So I want to congratulate you, not just for your accomplishments, um, which, is, which is, you know, the culmination of all of your hard work, because for some of you, or for many of us who embody um, different identities that have been marginalized over time, it makes the work that much harder to accomplish our goals. And so to be able to achieve that under sometimes extraordinary circumstances is worth noting. So I wanna commend you on three attributes that you've heard from, from the previous speakers. Persistence, resilience, and perseverance. So persistence is defined as firm or obstinate continuance in a course of action in spite of difficulty or opposition. And it certainly uh, we've run into some things that I would call obstinate uh, uh, obstacles that have come up against us. Resilience is the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties. And perseverance is steadfastness in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success. 
So to those of you who have demonstrated the persistence, resilience, perseverance, and overall strength and mental, spiritual, emotional, and sometimes physical endurance needed to graduate from Wayne State, I congratulate you and wish you all good things going forward. Life isn't always easy, and you've proven to yourselves that you can persevere and make it. In the process along the way, you discover your passion and purpose. It might take a while, but it will come. It's possible that you'll encounter fear and resistance within your own selves. That's when having a vision is important. The poet and scholar activist Audre Lorde said, when I dare to be powerful, to use my strength in the service of my vision, then it becomes less and less important that I am, whether I'm a, I am afraid. And so I congratulate you for all the times you dared to be powerful, to use your voice uh, in, to share uncomfortable truths, and all the times that you've extended love and compassion to people, even when it was difficult. For those times you persisted, even when you were uncertain and afraid. So congratulations to all of you who supported, all who supported you as you achieved these accomplishments, and congratulations on all you've been able to do. As President Wilson said, we are all so very proud of you. Thank you. Next, I would like to introduce Dr. David Strauss, Dean of Students. Good afternoon and congratulations. Uh, this is just a wonderful, wonderful day. I am excited and, and overjoyed to see all of you. We're back. We're open. We are active. We are Wayne State. We're here. It has always been such a pleasure over the years to provide remarks at the Rainbow Graduation. In all my time here, what has always kept me motivated and excited to come to work each day and student events at the day and the nights and the weekends that all of us do is the passion, the dedication, the drive, the ingenuity, the creativity, the perseverance, as Dr. Chambly said, that our students have. Our students are you, and I see this in all of you. But this year has been special. It's been different. And it's not because of COVID. It's because of student action. And my words of I hope inspiration to you today are themed under the movement of action. Now, why action? Because this year I noticed more than ever that when students felt or saw or experienced something that needed introduction or improvement or growth or change, they took action. They took action by starting a student organization or presenting a program or bringing their concerns to the student senate who put these concerns into dialogue, which led to project groups, which led to meetings with campus administrators, which led to student senate resolutions, which led to action. I am so proud of what I saw acted upon this year within the campus LGBTQ plus community. Organizations we've never had before were established. The Leftist Queer Collective, the Queer Professional Organization. Yep, cheer. <laughs> the Graduate Queer Alliance, Queer Med WSU, organizations that were established out of action and organizations that amongst our 521 registered student organizations were established to foster friendships and fellowship and programs and community and change and action. 
and I names of students that that we all interact with and I want to thank them and I'm probably missing some but Maureen Brunner and Emily Barrett and Hannah Bastian and Rania Bassi and Ayana English and Grace Snyder and Ethan Parrington and Teresa Jeffrey, leaders of these organizations, they are action heroes. But they're not part of the Justice League or the Avengers. They are better. They are action warriors. This year's Student Senate was one of the most active I've ever seen, and I've seen a lot of them. They propelled forward through action, increased mental health services on campus, environmental sustainability programs, wide and free distribution of feminine hygiene products, the Warrior Meal Share Program, and many more initiatives. But one in particular was very special, and very special to me, and one that I'm very proud of on their behalf as it's always been my passion to service this group of students during my time here. So what the Student Senate did for LGBTQ plus students. A, a very special shout out goes to three individuals and I know they're here today and I don't mean to embarrass you, but I want you to know and I want everyone to know how special they are. And, and we wouldn't be the same if it wasn't for them. The shout outs go to these phenomenal change agents, these phenomenal change actions that they did. Tony DiMeglio, Lucas, Lucas Bagdon, and Jaron Gojegi. Their action, their leadership on the Student Senate, the resolutions, their project groups, they created spaces and programs and services for the LGBTQ plus community. These, this action was action of passion and help and hope and love. Actions like the Queer Roundtable during Pride Week, the purchasing of gender affirming clothing to distribute from the warrior wardrobe, the continued work on education about the safe use of gender affirming products, the increasing clarity about where names and pronouns are displayed, the implementation of the option to put pronouns on one cards and more. Jaron and Lucas and Tony, this is action. So as all of you go forward into your next chapter, please go with action. Please take action. Please use action to create change, positive change, change for the better. This world is pretty messed up right now. And now, more than ever, we need action. We must act. You must act, and I know you will, because you are Wayne State Warriors, and that's what we do. That's what you do. You act, you create change to better the communities in which we live and learn and work. Continue this, as I know you will, because you're warrior strong, and there, there is this thing, right, called warrior strong and warrior spirit and warrior pride. But what you will do for all of us is to make us warrior proud. Good luck, best wishes, and thank you for being you. It is now my great pleasure to introduce our student speaker for today's event, Malia Tinsley.
Malia is a junior majoring in anthropology and double minoring in folklore studies and musical theater. She is the vice president of the student organization Joining Intersectionality, Gender, Sexuality, and Allies at Wayne, better known as Jigsaw. She also works as an RA at Chatsworth Suites and is a member of the RISE Learning Community and Alpha Kappa Alpha, Kappa, Alpha Sorority Beta Mu Chapter. That's too many Greek words for me today. Please welcome Malia Tinsley. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I just want to say again to Michael and Kristen, who are two of my advisors here, thank you again. I'm completely honored and also kind of nervous to speak in front of you all. Gosh, seeing everyone with their graduation caps and also the rainbow mask, I love it. Um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna try to work through my anxiety and also, as you can tell, I'm dealing with allergies right before speech, so that definitely <laughs> is making this a lot, fun, a lot of fun. Um, again, this is a huge honor. For, I'm again, I'm a junior, and during the past three years, I've spent two of my years here at Wayne State during COVID, and honestly, I feel bad. Like I feel bad for all of us who've had to go, like who've had to go through this experience. College is hard enough, and the fact that we've had to face the majority of it with the pandemic and having to learn remotely and then hybrid and back and forth. Congratulations to all of you for that. Now, yes, please applaud. <laughs> And again, like Dean Strauss said, this year was definitely a very special year, like the year of 2021 to 2022. We've seen the rise of different organizations that were needed on campus. For example, the Leftist Queer Collective, putting you guys on the spot again, <laughs> and also Queer Med. And these, yes, Queer Med, please, yes, applaud. <laughs> and this, these examples are just proof that Wayne State is growing better and stronger by the day because of change makers. And I'm not gonna mention your names again. I don't wanna put, put you guys on the spot, apologies. Um, but it also shows that Wayne State has a queer community that is needed and thriving. And again, <laughs> I was really surprised and also kind of scared when Michael asked me to be the speaker this year because there are so many of you out here who could have been and probably should have been on this mic right now. and. I appreciate that honor. Um, <laughs> I mainly want to focus on how the queer community here at Wayne State has affected me and has kept me going through some of my worst moments. Um, just this past year alone, it was like I've had roommate issues, I've had family issues, I've had moments that I was literally on the verge of the ledge. And I remember one day, one of my freshman buddies, I'm not going to name drop them because I think they're watching online. <laughs> she said that it's because of organizations and seeing people on campus being proud of who they are, seeing people on campus fighting for us in the student senate, seeing so many different op like opportunities to get involved on campus that makes them feel important when they didn't feel valid in high school, when they didn't have clubs like the GSA or where they didn't feel comfortable to be who they were around their family. and that moment, it reminded me of, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> that moment kind of reminded me of who I was before I, got to, before I got to Wayne State. Does anyone know where Chesterfield County is? It's a, it's a town, like it's a county kind of towards the tip of Macomb County and they call it Chester Tucky because of how very rural the views are. For example, most of my high school senior year, I had to ride past Confederate flags on the way to school. And of course, during the election of 2016, there were moments of me and many of my friends who were partial, like part of different racial backgrounds and part of different religious, like minorities, were crying and I remember crying in like different classrooms about how we were gonna get through this. And at that time, I was still trying to figure out who I was sexuality-wise. and. When I got to Wayne State through many different, like many different years, hi, I'm a, I'm a junior. I graduated in 2017 though, from high school, so it definitely took me a long way to get here, but. Sorry, I'm so nervous. There's a lot of you in here. <laughs> um, thank you. <laughs> This 
honestly, this is what I mean right now. Like, just a bunch of people who are like who are queer and LGBT, whatever pronouns you use, whatever background you come from, and people who support us. Like, most of us probably didn't get that when we were growing up. And also, besides growing up in a very racist background, my father is a minister. And we still don't really talk about me being queer in the house. My mom's like, hey, that's a cute rainbow shirt. You might want to hide that from your dad when you get home. But again, when I got to Wayne State, there was only maybe two different student orgs here that were aimed at LGBT people. For example, Jigsaw, which Blake Pruneau, he's gonna be, like they're gonna be up here later to re like to receive a graduation award and thank you so much. It has been an honor to serve as vice president under you. I'm gonna miss you and you don't have to leave yet, but um, yeah. <laughs> and also QDPOC, which stands for Queer Trans People of Color, which was founded and ran by Mr. Whitfield. I don't know if I know that they're still involved in actually HIV. In, like in recognizing HIV and AIDS in the Detroit community, so they've gone and graduated, but their legacy is still like is still very strong here at Wayne State. But through the past years, primarily during COVID, again online and during the past semester that we've been kind of hybrid meeting, seeing the rise of so many people getting active and seeing the things that we need to have here at Wayne State, it's something that is kind of unimaginable. Wayne State, we happen to be a rather diverse campus compared to the other schools in Michigan, but there's still a way to, like, we still have a ways to go. And I remember at the queer round, like, at the queer org round table led by Lucas, another lovely graduate, I'm putting you on the spot too. Um, and also Tony, yes, I'm putting you on the spot. And members from the student council. We, you get to see a bunch of student orgs brainstorming activities and brainstorming ways to change not just student life but even our one cards that's amazing like being able to have your pronouns on your one card that is outstanding <laughs> allergies i'm and also during my time here at wayne state i've definitely learned more about myself I've gotten to learn through a few of my friends, like through a few of my, I want to call all of you my friends because you're like, you're all queer, so you're my family. <laughs> and all of the allies too, your family too. We need all the love we can get. Um, but I've learned that I myself am stronger than I think I am, which is really hard to do because like Dean Strauss said, we're living in a tough world right now. Like the world is kind of frightening. Some of us don't, like I don't watch the news anymore. <laughs> so just, Knowing that we have, knowing that we have a community primarily at Wayne State that we can run to, that's something that I don't think any of us could have imagined before we got here. Especially in different organizations, like they mentioned earlier, I'm a part of, I'm an RA at Chatsworth Suites, which is primarily aimed at freshmen and. It's kind of sad to see that just a few days ago, freshmen were telling me that they didn't see that much of a queer, like of a queer representation in our building and in RA staff with us, which I know that that was definitely something that was brought up at the Queer Roundtable. So wait for the future, everyone. We're gonna get that done, hopefully. <laughs> um, and also, I'm a member of Alpha Capital of Alpha Sorority Incorporated, which is the first black Greek sorority in the, like in the country. Um, and there are a lot of perks with that. I mean, whether you love her or hate her, our Vice President of the United States is a member of the sorority as well, Kamala Harris, and I come from a line of a lot of really important women, including Maya Angelou and Toni Morrison. But then even now, I have to acknowledge that in the black, organ in the black community, there tends to be a little bit of homophobia, and. I was breaking down with my friend about this last night because at times at times it feels weird when you're part of when you're part of different minority groups when you're part of I'm sorry I'm so sorry when you're part of a minority group like that's pretty much been at the head of like been at the head of the news like 
of the news wearing Black Lives Matter and everything that's been going on the past few years, but because you're a queer person, knowing that in a way our like queer lives, especially the lives of our queer like trans sisters, primarily our, our queer trans black sisters, aren't really, <laughs> Sorry, I'm sorry, are really protected by our community and seeing what's going on at Wayne State again, the like the queer community at Wayne State has made me feel more included, unfortunately, than seeing some of like than some of the other student awards on campus. And I mean I'm crying about that because everyone should feel included, but I'm grateful that the queer community has been there for people like me who are still trying to find their way in this really random and crazy world that there are people like Gray and like Blake, you don't have to go again, you really don't have to graduate yet. And I guess because I feel like I'm rambling right now, I just wanna close the speech and I wanna say that to all of the people who are graduating right now, thank you for all of your service and all of your time here at Wayne State. It definitely, it definitely won't go unacknowledged and for those of us who are staying behind still at Wayne, I hope that we can honor, like I hope that we can show that your work mattered here at Wayne, so thank you. Thank you for that, Malia. <clears throat> you know, I often say that we have really amazing students at Wayne State, and I'm really feeling that today. And it is now my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, Curtis Lipscomb, Executive Director of LGBT Detroit. Born in Detroit and a graduate of Cass Tech, Curtis moved to New York City in the 1980s to attend Parsons, where he eventually earned a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Fashion Design. While there, he experienced both the rich vibrancy of LGBT culture and the personal devastation of HIV and AIDS. After working for years in the fashion industry, Curtis, back in Detroit, formed Kick Publishing Company in 1994, offering information, awareness, and organizing around the HIV AIDS crisis. At its inception, Kick was just the third black LGBT media company in the country. After over 20 years of advocacy and organizing, in 2015, Kick evolved into LGBT Detroit, whose mission continues to increase awareness, and awareness of and support to Detroit's dynamic LGBT culture through education and advocacy. Through his leadership, LGBT Detroit offers support for survivors of domestic violence and sexual assault, mentoring programs for youths, and safe spaces for educational programming. <clears throat> Curtis is also the co-founder of Hotter Than July, the world's second oldest black LGBTQ pride celebration, and more recently, Cold as Hell, a health-focused leather kink and fetish winter pride event. In addition to his expansive work with LGBT Detroit, Curtis has played a vital role in other organizations in the area. Some of that work includes serving as the development director at Unified, formerly AIDS Partnership of Michigan, and is co-planner of the 2012 National White House Conference of LGBT Housing and Homelessness held here at Wayne State University. In 2002 and 2014, he received the Equality Michigan Catalyst Award and somehow during that time found time to, folk, to attend classes here at Wayne State. We are honored to have Curtis here today, whose decades of social justice advocacy, empowerment, and care have shaped and saved the lives of so many. And I am particularly touched to have Curtis here today because he is a friend and former student. Please welcome Curtis Lipscomb. Good afternoon, my friends. Uh, Malia, congratulations, you did a great job. 
representing the students at Wayne State University. I am incredibly honored and flattered that you have given me this opportunity to share this moment with you on this unique Rainbow Graduation, Awards, and Homecoming Day. This date is an incredible, remarkable day. Now belongs to you. This is your day to the students and the graduates. Together, we celebrate and uplift you. I want to take the time to thank Wayne State University's Rainbow Graduation Planning Committee. I know what it is to plan, and so we definitely want to thank the committee. Uh, particularly, yes, yes, let's, <clears throat> let's thank the committee. Uh, particularly, Drs. Michael Schmidt and Dr. Stephanie Hawkins and Dean John Carvino. Thank you to my fellow board partner and business partner, Mr. Terrell White. I, can you raise your hand? I, there he is. I want to thank him. Um, because of his recommendation, uh, I aim not to suck, <laughs> but address you on this special day. I'm very serious. Don't want to embarrass him. You've given me and my life partner, my partner Willie is here. Wave your hand, honey, wave your hand. That's my life partner. They're watching you on camera. Uh, you've given me and my life partner, Willie, a special and precious moment to stand before you, your leadership, and offer this offering to you. To the graduates, I also want to thank particularly your families. As other speakers said, I want to include your spouses and your children. Because of their love and support, they have helped you to believe in yourself, and for you to achieve your dream, I so sincerely mean that. Uh, your families must be incredibly proud of you as much as I am. So this is the first time I have the opportunity to speak as a keynote in front of commencement ceremony. So like you, I'm nervous. I left my glasses in my briefcase, and so that's just me admitting ahead that I just may not read something correctly, but the text is long enough. And that's really important at a man of my age, the text size, the font size, right? Being able to read uh, clearly. And so I'm, I am generously nervous, and I hope to leave you with a memorable moment today. My name is Curtis Lipscomb. I am a native Detroiter, and I attended Detroit Public Schools, and my identities intersect broadly in multiple ways. I am a middle-aged, partnered, out black gay male that uses he, him pronouns. And I grew up and live as a socially conservative Christian that read DC comic books. I play records. I wear Banana Republic apparel. And I love Apple products. That's who I am. I'm very fortunate, I am, I was very fortunate to know myself and to come out as a teenager. I discovered myself before entering high school. My formative years um, of understanding my identity and learning about whom I was attracted to happened while I was still a very young teen. I even had a neighborhood crush on a boy and loved being in his presence. And in my speech, I didn't want to write his name because I wasn't sure if we were going to be recorded because we're still friends and I didn't want to embarrass him, though we're still friends. Uh, at Cerveny Middle School, the name is gone, it's a new name now, my guidance counselor directed my educational footsteps to a particular high school upon my completion in 1979. Just rest on 1979. For those that remember, rest on it, right? Can I get a 79 applause? I'm surrounded by millennials and Gen Xers. Am I, is that the right term? Gen Z's. Gen Z's, I'm surrounded by them. I feel like a super minority in my own workplace. I attended and graduated uh, from Cass Tech High School. It's, come on out, who's a technician? Come, come on, come on. Something about that green and white. Uh, second to none, you know it. Come on technician, come on technician, you know. Some three of us, we're gonna party after this, right? Just, okay, so back to professionalism. It's the 80s, 
and I pursued a dream of becoming a fashion designer on 7th Avenue in New York City. My art teacher and surrogate mother, Mrs. Marion Stevens, alive and well today, uh, uh, is why I was accepted at Parsons, the new school. She saw my talent and encouraged me to pursue my dream. By my sophomore year, she had the university recruiter recognize my talent, and unofficially she enrolled me. Upon my high school senior year commencement ceremony in June, I arrived in September to, achieve, to attend college. So when I entered college, I thought I was fully aware of where I stood in the world. The exiting of my bubble gave me an awareness of what black and gay was. I was 18 and I wasn't prepared. I struggled with my identity to others. I then understood that I was surrounded by people who had never met anyone like me. I res we resonate a little bit in that story. The school that I attended was a private school, so rest upon that, it was a private school. The lack of diversity was profound. Although other nationalities and ethnic students were in attendance, only six black students were in my class alone, and none of them were LGBT. Competitiveness, ambition, and drive weren't, was, weren't warm environments for camaraderie and friendship. Even with the black students, we fought all the time. I also, like, uh, like the dean said, I arrived in New York at the height of the HIV AIDS epidemic. My friends on Broadway were the first impacted that I was aware of. My heroes in the fashion world were second. I witnessed the suffering of Perry Ellis and Willie Smith and other famous designers of the time. I literally saw them wither right before my eyes. At our senior commencement ceremony, we gave a moment of silence to Willie Smith, who was at the time the most notable black fashion designer, and for people like me, a tremendous hero. I remember the last time I saw him, he was working on the award-winning outfit that my friend Annika designed, and he couldn't stand. He was literally sitting in a brace so that he could sit straight up to work. That was my last sight of them. And then at the ceremony, we, we, uh, we paid a tribute to him. By the time I was 22, I had completed my studies, pursued my professional career, and traveled the world as a New York-based fashion designer. All the while, my best friend who had joined me later was suffering. Unfortunately, unfortunately diagnosed uh, with HIV and AIDS, my best friend Robert E. Pennick III died in 1992. Upon his death at his bed, I swore that I would do all I could to make sure that no one else suffered at the hand of that virus. I serve as the executive director of LGBT Detroit. LGBT Detroit, founded in 1994, commits to furthering its mission increasing the prominence and visibility of Detroit's LGBT culture and building a strong, healthy, and vibrant community with a focus on economic and racial justice, healthcare disparities, global sexual freedoms and expressions, and anti-discrimination policies. LGBT Detroit envisions a Michigan in which citizens are treated fairly and, equal and equitably under the law and activate, amplify, and sustain LGBT plus culture, education, advocacy, and human rights. You students are the reason why I'm here today. We've worked hard to make sure our promise made was actualized. The LGBT movement persevered and was motivated to help create a world where you prosper. I see the light at the end of the tunnel, and you are at that end of that tunnel, and you shine bright. You are our futures, you are our freedom's future. 
You are my family members, and today you are celebrated. You have, you have achieved a triumph. I applaud you for the early mornings and the late nights, and Lord knows I know about those early morning and late nights in college. I applaud you that you even wanted this special day to recognize the multiple sides of you. In your sensational, in your sensational professional walk, I ask you to use your achievements as a tool not only to help others. Many people like me do not have, um, I'm sorry, many people like us do not have the good fortune to seek higher education. I recognize the difficulty of obtaining resources, both emotionally and financially. I ask you to use your, new prom, your, your newfound opportunities in your professional growth to lift your fellow person. Use your God-given talent to help those who need help from people like us. We are fortunate, and we must remember that we must always remember to help those that we can. It is my prayer that my prayer is that your time in college is when the struggle was at a minimum and the educational opportunity soared. Once again, I want to thank all that has given me this opportunity to speak before you. Thank you to the planning committee. Thank you for all those who organized today's date. And to you graduates, congratulations. Your time is now. Thank you. <laughs> Told you we have amazing students at Wayne State University. It is now time for the awards portion of the ceremony. I would like to ask Charles Otis and Jeffrey Ryder to say a few brief words about their award and to announce the winner. And as a reminder for all students coming to the front to receive an award or graduation accord, please approach from your left side, which that, I, I, it's, it's, it's got this audience left, right, yes, your left side, it's like a, I've got to be like a yoga instructor or something. Um, for those seated on the right, please approach the front by going around and behind the camera up to the front. Uh, if there are multiple winners of an award, please reserve your applause until all the names are read. And once you receive your award, remain at the front to my right uh, to be joined by the other winners um, and for our photo op. Uh, uh, Charles Otis and Dr. Jeffrey Ryder. I'm Jeff, he's Chuck. We are life partners. We got married 2014. And uh, to Malaya, really, you spoke from the heart. I loved it. And I have to tell you, there's promise for a future, lots of promise. Because when I graduated from the University of Virginia in 1974, I wouldn't have told anybody that I was gay. My life is so different now. All our lives are so different. Uh, the world has transformed so many ways in almost 50 years since I went to college, way, way, way before you were ever thought of or born. <laughs> but in, in, there's, of course, as my father used to say, the pendulum swings and there's tough, tough times that are intermixed with all the advances, but they keep on happening. And they will happen in your lifetime. And when you reach our age, you will, have this, you will stand up at a place like this and probably say, you cannot believe how much the world has changed, because it will. And it has changed so dramatically since I was a first year student at the University of Virginia or a high school student in Edison, New Jersey. And I'm Chuck, who went to Wayne State, I'm sure yeah. it's dramatic. Um, so really, I really loved listening to you. And you can be optimistic that things will get better. Um, and it is our pleasure to have one, to congratulate all the graduates uh, at the ceremony today, and that is an incredible pleasure that we are able to endow a scholarship uh, in uh, gender studies. And so today we're going to, uh, is the recipient here, uh, Rochelle Danqua.
And so, congratulations. Thank you. It's a very nice. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, I'm good. Okay, thank you. I'm in tears. I'm confused and I have the script in front of me. Congratulations. For our next award, I'd like to ask Mike Labor to say a few words about Michael Lagatella and to announce this year's winners of the Logatella LGBT Endowed Scholarship. Thanks, Dr. Corvino. Hello, everyone. It's an honor to recognize this year's recipient of the Legatella Scholarship Award. Uh, Mike was my partner and a student at, at Wayne State when he died more than 30 years ago. Uh, a lifetime ago, I recognize for, for most of the folks or many of the folks in the room today. Uh, but I will say not a day goes by that his friends and I don't uh, think about him and miss him deeply. And really, that's why the scholarship was created. Uh, the goal was to keep memory, Mike's memory alive and to assist LGBT students like him at Wayne State. Uh, we worked really hard and, and the effort began back in 1991 with uh, great assistance from Dr. Adamani at the time. Um, but we worked hard to create that permanent legacy to Mike uh, that we're all so proud of today. Um, I'd like to thank this year's winners, and really I'd like to thank uh, the scholarship committee at Wayne uh, for all the help lending their names and talents to, to keeping the scholarship relevant and alive for all these years. Um, I do want to introduce the names of the winners. Unfortunately, we took so long to, to make the grants, uh, unfortunately, none of our recipients can be here tonight. So I'll still announce the winners. Um, some of them may be uh, participating virtually. Uh, the first winner is Aiden Bongiorno, uh, Jovan East, Madison Jacob, Alize Huevez, Julia Cosa, Ani Purcell, Cheryl Lynn Wade, and Ethan Whitney. So thanks again on behalf of the Legatella Scholarship. Thank you and congratulations to the winners. For our next set of awards, I'd like to ask Dr. Raul Mitra, Associate Professor in the Department of Communication, and Michael J. Barnes, Associate Professor in the Department of Theater and Dance, to come to the front to announce the winners. So the College of uh, Fine Performing and Communication Arts Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transgender LGBT Endowed Scholarship provides financial support Oh, I should probably remove this. Good point. <laughs> uh, provides financial support and hope to meritorious students who demonstrate positive sensitivity to and involvement in LGBT issues. Preference is given to LGBT students, although all students are invited to apply. Application and or acceptance of the award will not be construed as an indication of the sexual orientation of the individual. That's like the boilerplate language, right? Uh, so, uh, getting to the good part. This year's recipients are Julia Coza, who I believe is not here today, and Jasmine Middlebrooks. Is Jasmine here? No, all right, thank you. <laughs> uh, 
Um, all right, so I've got one more award to read out, and that is the Kyle Holton Memorial Theater Scholarship, also from the College of Fine Performing and Communication Arts. So this scholarship fund was established in the memory of Kyle Holton, uh, and while at Wayne State, Kyle was instrumental in forming art for artillery, which allowed him to express his artistic talents in writing, producing, directing, casting, set building, and performing. He referred to it as guerrilla theater, a way to express art in provocative and powerful ways. Kyle's energy and enthusiasm touched many lives. He always encouraged others to be themselves, to follow their dreams, and to find joy in life. Through this scholarship fund, Kyle's spirit will continue to touch others as they follow their dreams. So this year's recipient is Mike Danai. Sort of switching his places now. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. Uh, this is the Advocate, Ally, and Accomplice Award, which is to recognize a faculty or staff member whose work has benefited the queer campus community. Um, this year's recipients are Joy Clark. Is Joy here? Yes. And Margaret Mac, Mac blah, messing it up. McEverkin. McEverkin. Thank you, Margaret. Sorry I did that. <laughs> I even practiced this ahead of time. <laughs> you wouldn't know that I read all the names at graduation. <laughs> Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Michael and Raul, and congratulations to all the winners. I would now like to ask Ashton Nadwicki, another former student of mine, I'm old, I've been here a long time, <laughs> uh, to come to the front to say a few brief words about Jay Ralco and announce the winners of the award set up in Jay's honor. Hi, everyone. Um, to that last award winner, I feel your pain. No one can pronounce my name either. <laughs> All right. Uh, Jay was my best friend, my baby brother, my Biffle. When he died, we knew we wanted to find a way to keep his spirit alive here at Wayne State, so we created an award that would celebrate what Jay was best at, bringing people together. Jay loved people, and he never lost a chance to throw a barbecue. When we created this award, we wanted to make sure that it was something that he could actually have won, so that threw the GPA requirement right out the window. Uh, hitting the books wasn't his strong suit, but when it came to finding the loneliest person in the room and making them feel like they were the most important person in the room, he had the market cornered. I'm proud to be here presenting this award to three individuals who truly embody uh, the spirit of community. And with that, I would like to present these awards to Maureen Brunner, Tony DeMeglio, and Jaren Gujegi. Again, congratulations. I don't know if I'm congratulating you for the award or figuring out how to do the aisles, but both are accomplishments today. I'd now like to ask Dr. Kess Ballantyne 
Assistant Professor in the School of Social Work, and Eric Hornick, Senior Major Gift Officer in the School of Medicine, to come to the front for the next set of awards. Good afternoon. Um, I'm here to present the Professor Effie Ambler Memorial Endowed Scholarship in History. Dr. Effie Ambler, Professor Emeritus, developed and taught undergraduate and graduate courses in European and especially Russian history in the Department of History at Wayne State University from 1996, or excuse me, 1966 until her retirement in 2006. Professor Ambler was also intensely interested in advancing education and opportunities for women. With others, she developed the Women's Studies Program at WSU and was director of the Women's Studies co-major and minor from 1989 to 1991. Professor Ambler was dedicated to urging students to learn about the world and expand their horizons. Uh, whoops. <laughs> Through this endowment, she will help students uh, finance a liberal arts education, which she saw as critical to citizenship in the world community. This year's Professor Effie Ambler Endowed Scholarship in History goes to Olivia Barron. <laughs> Unfortunately, Olivia can't be here today, but we celebrate with her in spirit. And today I'm pleased to uh, announce the award for Maria Voorhees Outspoken Advocate. This award celebrates the memory of Maria Voorhees, a former Wayne State student and Jigsaw student leader who died in 2017. Maria was an outspoken advocate for the queer, trans, and disability communities. And this award recognizes a student whose advocacy and voice honor Maria's legacy. Today's recipients are Lucas Bagdon, Blake Pruno, and Gray James Snyder. Next, I'd like to ask Dr. J. Lloyd Allen, Assistant Professor in the School of Social Work, and Dr. Renee Hoogland, Professor in the Department of English, to come to the front for the final set of awards. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I feel like this is my own graduation. <laughs> um, so the Dr. Thomas Klein Gender and Sexuality Speaker Series Support Fund um, Thomas R. Klein earned his bachelor's degree at Wayne State in 1973. He went on to earn his medical degree at Michigan State University and began his career as a resident in family practice at St. Joseph Hospital in Chicago. In 1979, you. <laughs> Dr. Klein was one of the few openly gay physicians in Chicago. He soon earned a reputation as a compassionate doctor who provided quality care in the gay community. This led Dr. Klein to serve on the front line of the HIV AIDS epidemic in Chicago. Dr. Klein believes in the importance of an active LGBTQ plus community on Wayne State's campus. He established a speaker series to provide students, faculty, and the public with access to speakers on topics related to gay identity and gender and sexuality more broadly. The fund also supports a prize for the best paper on gender and sexuality at the Wayne State University undergraduate research and Creative Projects Conference. And so the winner is Alexandra Engel. Great, Rainbow graduates. Um, I am Dr. Tom Klein uh, of 
a graduate of Wayne State many years ago um, who had a 40-year um, medical um, practice in, in Chicago and am recently retired. Um, I'm sorry I'm not able to be there in person uh, with, with all of you, but just wanted to let you know how excited I am that um, my husband, David, and I have been able to um, renew our, our pledge to keep the speakers um, program going, um, which also includes a small stipend for um, the award that's going to be announced after, after this. Uh, and, um, you know, we're excited that the program is really taking off and is, is able to provide, um, you know, speakers that might not otherwise be able to be there. Um, wish you the best in your, your ventures after graduation. So y'all didn't hear what I just said, so let's reverse. So our winner is Alexandra Pugals. Hello, everyone. Um, last but not least, obviously, um, I'm proud to announce the, or introduce the Dr. Ray Lee Sipurin GLBTA Endowed Scholarship, which was established to recognize scholastic achievement, to encourage continued progress, and to provide assistance to students in financing their education in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. To be eligible, applicants must be full or part-time undergraduate or graduate students working or interning within any GLBTA resource area, related student groups or university offices and programs, or local GLBTA community of organizations. Applicants must have a minimum GPA of 3.0. Um, I think there's a little video, right? Is there a video? Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm delighted to be here, even if it's only by um, film or video. I would have loved to have come and be there in person as I was for the first graduation. But um, due to, in part, an unfortunate accident where I managed to shatter my wrist and have surgery, um, I'm home recuperating, being very dependent. I'm delighted, though, to be included in this um, ceremony for graduating students and those of you who are continuing on. I can't tell you how wonderful it is to see that the university has become a participant and supporter of this activity, recognizing the accomplishments of students in the community. I can tell you that when I was a student at Wayne, just after Wayne became Wayne State University, um, there was no such activity. In fact, there was not only minimal activity, there was really no university support. So this is a wonderful change to see that the university has become a supporter and a participant in not only the ceremony for those of you who are graduating, and I hope those of you graduating have your loved ones and your family and supporters here with you, as well as for those who will be continuing and 
will be awarded um, a scholarship for continuing work. I want to offer my personal congratulations and really congratulations and thanks to the university, the Alumni Association, the ODI, the OMSI program, and the GSW program for becoming official supporters of this activity and recognizing its importance to the university. And I hope that both the endowment that I began, which was really not that large, and I hope all of you will consider becoming um, members who will support these efforts in the university because a little bit can go a long way when others see that this is important and will continue to support it. And it will continue to be an endowed effort, which means it will go on and on. I'm delighted that three students will be awarded um, funds to continue the work that they are doing. And I hope that all of you will take great pleasure in the success that you've achieved and the recognition that you deserve and are getting both officially from the university and from those of your friends and parents and loved ones who are here with you and hopefully will continue to support you in your efforts. And I want to thank you all for being here and for recognizing what an important activity this is that you can be recognized and thanked and appreciated for the kind of work that you're doing that supports the efforts and the academic study and the programs that are being offered by Wayne State. Congratulations and good luck in your endeavors. And thank you for including me in this really important activity. And this year's recipients of the Dr. Ray Lee Siporin um, Award are Lauren Hudson, who may not be in attendance, I don't think, and Infinity Rush. And Ebony Williams. <laughs> Thank you, Lloyd and Renee, and congratulations to our winners. We have now reached the moment of the graduation march and conferral of the cords. I'm going to ask Dr. Simone Chess, Director of the Gender, Sexuality, and Women's Studies Program and Associate Professor in the Department of English, and Matt Taylor, Assistant Professor in the Department of Theater and Dance, to come to the front to help with the conferring of the cords. One of the um, cool things about going further and further in academic advancement is they give you more stuff to wear, and we are very delighted to, to give you stuff uh, to wear today. Mackenzie Bates, BS in Environmental Science. Marissa Berdino, BA in Political Science.
Mel Sharavino, BA in Psychology and BA in Political Science. Diad Dyer, BS in Environmental Science. John Dembinski, MPA in Public Administration. More than rule followers and rule breakers, I like the grand sweep. Yeah. <laughs> Juniper Fedor, MS Pathologist Assistant. Elliot Fish, BA in English. Julian Godman, BA in Linguistics and BA in African American Studies. Jayla Harston, BSW in Social Work. <laughs> Alex Horn, BS in Psychology. Alexandra Ingalls, BA in Political Science and BA in Gender, Sexuality, and Women's Studies. <laughs> Ali Mangiapan. BA in Political Science. Sarah McCall, MBA in Business Administration. Kristen Prezolowski, BSW in Social Work. Blake Pruneau, BA in Music. <laughs> Lucia Rumery, BS in Dance. <laughs> Kyle Sammons. BSW in Social Work and BA in Sociology. <laughs> Elizabeth Stein, BS in Psychology.
Tina Zarelli, MSW in Social Work. If there are any graduating students in attendance whose names were not read, please feel free to come to the podium to receive your cord. To all of our graduates, congratulations. You are now, or will be soon, uh, when the degrees are conferred, alumni of Wayne State University. And it is my pleasure to introduce by video Anessa Morley, the Executive Director of the Alumni Association, to welcome you to that status. Congratulations, everyone, from the Alumni Association. We are truly excited to see what you will achieve as new alumni of Wayne State. You are now part of a community of more than 294,000 alumni. There are Wayne State alumni in every corner of Detroit, throughout Michigan, across the country, and around the world. That's a lot of people who are willing and able to help you connect, to help you get a job, advance in your field, and give back to your community. The Alumni Association is here for you with many opportunities to connect with your fellow alumni. Please be sure to keep in touch with us and check out our calendar of upcoming events at alumni.wayne.edu. And please let us know where your journey takes you Again, congratulations on your graduation. I would now like to ask my dear friend, Dr. Simone Chess, uh, Director of the Gender, Sexuality, and Women's Studies Program and the, an Associate Professor in the English Department to give our closing remarks. Thank you, Dean Corvino, and thank you all for your patience today. Um, congratulations to all of today's graduates and award winners. We are so tremendously proud of you and your accomplishments. So one more congratulations. Also, graduates, we have special swag for you in this region near the step and repeat later on, so take your selfies and get a prize. Uh, it is my privilege to conclude today's proceedings, and I promise I won't keep you long, but I do have a few closing things to say about community in general and our Wayne State community in specific. First, I want to thank the community of people who made today's event possible, including Provost Cornblue, Associate Provost Chambly, Dean Strauss, Dean Hartwell, our MC, Dean Corvino, and the entire Rainbow Graduation Planning Committee, because Curtis, you were right, it took a lot of work. Uh, Ann Bowlby, Patrick Field, Gina Horowitz, Robert Heller, Brandon Shamoon, and uh, Dr. Stephan, uh, sorry, I lost my place. Rachel Flum, our committee co-chairs, Dr. Stephanie Hawks, standing in for Kristen Johnston, and Dr. Michael Schmidt. None of this would have been possible without those community members. Let's clap for them again. <laughs> this event would not have been possible without those dedicated people's work to reinvent an in-person rainbow graduation after cancellation in 2020 and a virtual event last year. I'm grateful to the donors, many of whom are here today or participating virtually, for their generous gifts that support scholarships and awards that we've celebrated today. And I'm really grateful to the students assembled here and watching online, whose brilliance motivates everything we're here for. When we first started Rainbow Graduation almost a decade ago, with a few people in a basement room in the Student Center, we didn't have such a long and prestigious list of people to thank. We never imagined streaming our event, and frankly, I never thought we'd be able to score a rainbow balloon arch of this magnitude. <laughs> I'm very committed to it. <laughs> but what we had then, and what we still have as the core motivation behind this celebration, is a strong sense of community and connectedness. Feminist and queer students and staff at Wayne State have always found ways to find each other, to celebrate each other, to conspire together <laughs> to find academic and social and activist outlets for our passions and to ask the university to recognize and support them. And our community's work has had an impact. 
Over the last few years, we've seen institutional change that supports and expands our traditions. Inclusive bathrooms on the campus maps, display name and pronoun options on our online platforms, more infrastructure for coming out week, pride, Women's History Month, and rainbow graduation, continued resources for queer and feminist organizations and programming, dedicated services and trainings through OMC, diverse employee engagement groups stepping into intersectional advisory roles, and close to home for me, a new space, academic advisor, a new queer studies minor, a new curriculum overhaul in GSW that's brought our majors and minors to over 100 students and growing. In the last few, thank you, we're working on it. The last few years have been hard on communities, especially ones like ours that can still feel a little scrappy, a little lonely. Students, especially those of you graduating this year, have had to work harder to find the connection and support that you deserve. We've missed each other, and we've missed opportunities to measure and assess how far we've come and how far we still have to go. But we've not stopped working, not stopped building our community. And so when I look at today's graduates, future alumni, who I hope will be back at this event, here together with the community who's rally rallied to come and celebrate them, I have a very strong feeling that we're still headed in the right direction together. This is how it happens. Thank you all for being here.